Somebody pray for us, Ben, pray for us. Lord, we do thank you for this time, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to um, come to you, Lord, with a fresh and willing hearts, Lord. Mm -hmm. Clear of all distractions. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we open our spirits to receive, Lord, your wisdom, your word. Lord, touch us in a way that we may grow, that we may know you better, that we may know the place that you've given us, or to be, to walk in, or to be pleasing servants in your house. Lord, thank you for soon. Thank you for his willingness or to speak the wisdom that you've given to him. I pray that you'd bless him in mighty ways, not only in this time, Lord, but Lord, but because of his obedience. Lord, I do ask that these, these truths would, um, Lord, make a big impact, and that we would not receive them and try to walk them out, Lord, as the world would, but we would receive your simple truth, your reality, Lord, in that real, in that real way, Lord, a practical way and a spiritual way. Mm. So, Lord, we do bless your name in this time. We thank you and we love you, Father. Thank you. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lord, we, we do bless you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And Lord, I, I always pray it, but Lord, your faithfulness as well, Lord, because it's your word to be praised because of it, Lord. Lord, the, the psalmist would always pray to you for your loving kindness over and over and over and over again, Lord, because you're worthy. Lord, and so, Lord, we praise you, we bless your name, we thank you, Lord, and um, Lord, we ask that you just bless this time as we meet, Lord. We do ask that you bless soon and that your spirit rest and speak through him, Lord, and that, um, that we would receive and hear the words that you have to speak, Lord. Um, we pray for each person that comes, Lord, we ask that that you bring them, Lord, and that um, we would all hear and, and grow, Lord, from your wisdom and your truth, Lord, that you speak. Mm. This nourishment, Lord, to our soul and our spirit, Lord. Mm. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. Um, I don't have a, a, a clear discussion line, so I'm going to go with the flow. With thoughts, I do have a vision. How, um, understanding what my the essence of the topic will be the same will be the teaching so I'm going to go with the first to give an overview of what we're going to talk about concerning the family culture of God. First we're going to talk about the time where we are in and the Lord intent in the sense that how he wants his family or his people to be restored in what way he wants his family to be restored, his people to be restored. And uh, it's always to do with a new perspective, look at what is really God want to do with his people. So we're going to contrast that with certain expectations yeah. of that has been prevalent and popular even in today's Christian hope, you know, the hope what God is going to do. Not from a critical point of view, but talking about, uh, you know, the prophetic cry is one thing. When the reality comes, uh, fulfills, fulfills the thing that God long has been inspired people to have. And uh, then there will always be this gap of reality concerning then the things you think you, you expect God to do. So we see those things happen continually, become a struggle, especially for the generation, for the people, 
were actually invited to enter and enjoy the promises, the reality of the promises that happened to the Israelites, that happened to even from the first couple, Adam and Eve had the reality. But in a sense, their hope was deviated, the expectations of we hold God does things deviated from God's, God's ways, the reality of how God wants to do things with them. Now, fast forward, we will see that um, so were you know, Noah's songs. You know, there are certain ways they expect that God to rescue them, things are going to be certain ways. And Noah himself has suffered a certain lapse in his, in his life. We see this also happened, especially in the three generations of Pishaks, from uh, Abraham to Jacob. Then we goes on, fast forward to the Israelites. We see again, this is a huge contrast now. That is a promised land, God promised. The prophetic hope, and right, they hold on to is uh, so contra con contradicting mm -hmm. their, their cries of need, their cry of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Yet there was a very generation which draw out of the world to be the recipient of the promises. Mm -hmm. And the promises in the natural, the promised land, it's also a spiritual promises <coughs> that has become a holy people of God, which is a totally fulfilled. So, this prolonged going on, this struggle, we can see again begin to intensify when Christ came to humanity. Mm -hmm. There's a prophetic hope. Even John the Baptist, we have been in God's worst time talking about the whole John in his own thinking as a pure prophet, as the greatest of all prophets, yet was not able to accommodate the reality of God, how he, so he's someone to fulfill his kingdom. You know, John was said, repent for the kingdom is on the way. The kingdom is in here. Yet when the kingdom comes, what happened? He has a different expectations. So those are give us a precedence to examine. So if this is a contrast, always happens, this is a gap always seems to hinder God's people. What we need to do today should now we have awareness, this is soberness is that I don't want the things the Lord long prophesied, the things I put a lot of hope in, and knowing God has individually, even corporately, even as a generation, God's people has a speaking to us that He going to restore everything. Everything going to come to confirmation. I don't want that hope to be again, be conventionally or traditionally understood in the primary is the project, the old ones get me the sense. Mm. So I needed to ask God to say, what is the new one? What is a new wine skin you want to prepare me for and prepare me into mm. if I deserve him? Mm. So those were one valuable situations. So we from this perspective examination, so we will talk about well, what God intended to do? How He gonna do it if He gonna restore the people? What are we He gonna do it? And in what vision He wanted the people to be? I mean, because God is gonna restore, He's not gonna do a work of restoration without a vision, without a set of the order, without a perspective, am right? So it's like you wanna go somewhere. Where's your destination? You're gonna have to mark it out. You're gonna shoot the arrow and you know the target. God never leave his people who he called to fulfill his realities without the clear vision. It's, it's not God lying, it's not God confusion, it's always invitation. He said, this is what I want to do. Now this is a benefit or the blessing for you to believe and obey. Mm -hmm. And this is the disadvantage or bad consequences if you don't believe and disobey. So you have a choice. Always God gives man a choice. The willingness of the heart, the free will of man has to exercise to a place that said, time will be done. You know, time will be done. But it's educated acceptance. It's educated mm -hmm. obedience. Obedience in God is never compulsive. 
is always educated, it's always voluntary. So now, however he does that, now God is good at educating the people, therefore the trumpet call, therefore the prophet again and again speaking, therefore many helps on the way and uh, require the people finally said, this is the God, this is what he wanted to do. I want to be the one that is to do his work to fulfill his promises. So in that the perfect, prophetic perspective, we can clearly then see what I got to do. But what I got to do ended up, we're going to talk about what I got to do, restore his people to be that holy people of the perverted, corrupt generation. Now how that can happen, how that can happen, evidently God has said, I'm going to build you from the ground up. I'm going to from the grassroots movement. I'm not going to top down. I'm going to from every heart, every family, every relationship to re recondition it, you know, to rebuild it, to reconstruct it. So, but it can never do that without the secure people who believe the vision, dedicated, commit to the vision, are willing to revise their life from every aspect to say, we want to be that new people. We want to be the covenant God, the people. We don't want the tradition, we don't want hear, see, we don't want the imagination to hinder us. We want to obey into the little things, from the small things, to expect God to do great things, become my small, smallest obedience. So that perspective you do is we bring in the introduce why God uh, Want the people to know his family culture, his kingdom culture. What then transpired because God more than one a servant to serve the soldier, establishing the authority, power, and wisdom, and love, and the grace to minister those things, to teach those things. But he wanted to produce a people. He wanted to produce a people. He wanted to send a hope on in the air. Someday, somehow, somewhere, it's going to happen. He wanted to be this promise fulfilled, this call be fulfilled, they will be my people, I shall be the God. This is the fulfillment of the new covenant, then we can see everyone is taught by God. Mm -hmm. Not by heresy, not by imagination, not by our own standards. Mm -hmm. Everyone is taught by God, taught what? Maybe ask, what the content? Go to another session, do another miracle? Or know the will of God for his people. Know the heart of the Father, Heavenly Father for his sons. Know the one who is a father for all nations, am I right? To have us to be, to have our family, to have our community, to have our nation to be built up. Mm. Now, we don't use this to say, I'm going to rule the world. I'm going to change the po politicians. <laughs> That's just no nonsense. We begin to see those are. Uh, high-charted visions of passion and zeal that are so far short and deviated from God's purposes. Therefore, we have the advantage to tell people, uh, give them clarity, so they're able to differentiate what we are talking about, even maybe use the same vision, same terminology. We are not talking about the fluffy stuff. We're talking about the reality of God. It's very solid, very practical, very simple things were personal, and uh, they're not big things, they, but they're mighty, they are big in God's heart. And so, in the, from there we're talking about, then narrow down, then how then you supposed to carry it out. First you've been taught, obeying to, then you receive the benefit, receive the wisdom, establish those things, how you pass on to your children, how you pass on to your neighbor, how you position yourself as a teacher of the Word of God, not beyond the perfect, uh, a, a, a disciple beyond the practitioner. There's three stages. One, you have to be able to hear and believe and obey. Therefore, you have to practice it. If you don't have practice it, you never have the result, you never have the reality, you know, which is more most Christian teaching do this day, unfortunately, but God wants us to be the possessor of the reality. 
when you have reality <coughs> already, this natural God will establish you into the grace and give you freedom and opportunity to, to teach others the same way. Now the first thing teach is a generational. It's not parallel, it's not pair, it's a generational. God never wants the teaching to be a discussion, this kind of teaching. It's instructional, it's commandments, it's covenantal terms. That means required of honor and holiness. Holiness can never be maintained, presented without honor. God, when He talks about His glory, in essence, He's talking about His honor. You know, you honor God. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, God has restored the divine order, the divine ways. This is not a man trying to honor one another. The Lord Jesus clearly differentiated two ways. Said, you know, man, if he come in his own name, you will honor him, receive him. <coughs> You know, lavish him with all high praise and uh, whatever. But if uh, I come in God's name, you don't really honor me. You actually persecuted me. He despised me. So, but he tell disciples that uh, insist on this honor, insist to be confident and uh, insist on people receiving this honor. You know, they have to receive me in my name. You have to go about discipling after doing things for the kingdom in my name. Now that is not to serve God's honor or glory. That actually is one thing. The one is what it means. Now that's a different, totally different understanding about the oneness. The one is often construed as a person so elevated in the spirit that have such a oneness with God. God's oneness is a body. God oneness is the incorporated culture. God oneness is the people of God as a whole, am right? So you don't tell me right hand, left hand can ever attain by themselves any oneness. This is impossible for them to do. But when talking about they are one with the body, one with the person, one member, one body, one Christ, one life. One agreement. That's what it means this oneness. So individualism, independent spirit, is the only terms modern day we use it to describe that the branch is after the one. He's on his own. He's growing on his own. So when Jesus taught the discipleship, what happened? He first started with I am. The why am I you are the branches? So therefore there's a oneness in this. You can't say one is, is the same with another branch. They're independent of different branches. They bear the same kind of fruits, but they're different branches. You can't tell the lower branch and the upper client branches that we are one, we are the same, we're supposed to be nothing different. But you graft it into one one, and then one one, you bear one kind of fruits. You flow into one economy for life. You have one source of nourishment, one season, you know, one growth in due season. There's a oneness in this. And I hope I, you're making, I'm making sense to you. So we begin to understand, abiding in me is not self-made economy. You can't just say abide in God without this economy, <laughs> without the understanding and approaching this reality. I'm making sense, Elena, you see how many confusion we have? So what happens then with the teaching that we have is a begin to tell you, here's the economy of God's life. This whole God graces the people together as a whole for each one to be one with Him. And when that happened, He can be the God from the people, for a chosen people, for a holy people, amen, for sanctified people, people set apart for Him, not for their own, not for any other purposes, especially not for the devil. <laughs> and be, the, the devil has a people, am right? So yeah, we know yeah. that. So, And uh, then we say, God is our God. Now is that final or <coughs> ongoing? Ever increasing? But that increase can never happen and kill the foundation, 
the source, the root, the branch is 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 there. Am I right? So listen. Whole people of God can worship him. If there is no temple, no ark, no altar, no priesthood. So whole God can restore, he has restored the things to set a priest into function. What do priests talk to people? You need to tithe? <laughs> you need to, do, to, 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 to bring a better land? <laughs> Which they will tell people, and right? Those are, but that's, that's just the, you know, just like a tip of the iceberg, right? So <laughs> if you don't even tithe, you don't have a clarity, you need, God's required a better land, <laughs> a pure land. Well, what are we talking about here, you know? So, so there is something totally missing. It's like a, a man John is smiling you know, because this is so simple. It's like um, people say, I'm a good citizen, I'm a good citizen. And you go to the bar, you go to a shop, you don't even pay your bills. You said you're a good citizen, you know, are you kidding me? <laughs> you don't even want to be any good citizen to begin with. So, mm -hmm. You don't want to even be a good human being. So in a sense, am I right? So, because there are certain things required on us to be beneficial God's people. Covenant come with responsibility. You can't just claim the benefit without uh, fulfilling the terms. You know? mm. Amen? Hallelujah. In this light, I was speaking those things. Now, in family culture, in kingdom culture, God is not a God of rules, do or don'ts. But through those fundamental rules or principle practices, he wants to reveal his heart, his righteousness, his justice. But above all, doing this his way, then his love, his wisdom. Why I'm doing things this way? Why I said do not move the boundary? Do not move the boundary. So why? Why should I have one wife? Why child should respect the parents? Why parents should always take initiative and take the authority and the grace in God granted to be a messenger or teacher of God before the young generations? Why this needed? Why teaching the word of God is not supposed to be excluded? In every facet of our life, every relationship should be the center and the forefront of what we do. Why is that? Is that merely because we want to be religious? Or God said, there is a higher reason than just reading things together. Mm -hmm. There is a higher way of just doing, spending time together. There. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm making sense to you. Mm -hmm. So, now God is good at doing that. Things. And this honor system has nothing to do with personal affections. Personal really is this way of doing things. Well, the moon circle on the sun, not otherwise. <laughs> Springtime comes, flowers and body, and not otherwise. There's a set way of God. This is not compulsive oppressive, this is a set you free. Mm set you into the thing that it needs to be done. That's called order. Righteousness in God's eyes. Against this is chaos, confusion, or lawlessness. Against unrighteous, righteousness, unrighteousness, or sin. Missing the ways of God. Missing the ways of God. But Beside the natural aspects, the most important and approximate will of God teaching man from the ancient time till now, till future, is everlasting, is how to deal with the human relationships. Hey, tell me what the major trouble of your life. <laughs> tell me about it. Your father, your son, is not a lesson to you. <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the real problem? The son not talent, not smart, not strong, getting sick. Those are important, you know, things to care about, to worry about. But what's eventually the end of the day? Everything's good now. 
the son is not honoring you, not obeying you, not 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 <coughs> cherish you, and right? He's a you to the degree you feel so miserable. I feel to be a father. You, you want to be a father, the son is not allowing you to be a good father. Mm. What about the a son? What he, he said, I want to be the best son, but my father is a, is a drunkard. <laughs> so he, he just didn't care for me. He just thinks that don't do his, that no father will think it, it's not right, you know, so he grieved. So mankind, this struggle is continue going on. And we continue to strive to, from our own experience, our own needs, our own culture, to try to map out the, some solution. For ourselves, for society, for others, self-help, self-taught. But did we did it from where? God tell you everything. We had to talk about the psychology, we had to talk about the counsel, you know. I heard, uh, I mean, you understand my point, you know, so like, uh, you know, what you always have this, uh, what the Yiling was talking about, this, this, you know, you have this uh, thing that can pop out of the ocean, you can never put it on the water, you have basically, <laughs> continue to do busy with this, right? And you think you're doing a good job, because you have a cold time together. When we hand her to pop up, you're overwhelmed, you say, I am give up, right? <laughs> well, that's what human leadership is about. The professor, the political arena, whatever culture from, from the people tell you how to handle life in a good way, personally, community, as a nation, as a people, they continue busy bodies, but they fulfilled God. Therefore, we have a symptom today that families are broken, schools become galleys is not included. We talk about the science, talking about philosophies. God is treating God as if he's the enemy for those things. You know, we talk about the intellectual pursuits. We often think God hindered or presses us to be smart, to be understand, to be wise. Quite the opposite, all sources of wisdom, all sources of understanding, all sources of no hopes and creativity should be from God. So we just have this shattered, confused, self-made struggle for mankind, and different factions struggle with one another. Therefore we lost the way, eventually the Lord said, if you don't know how to love one another, as God's people, well others are not going to be so impressed by you. You know how to love one another, in what way? by our own senses, by our own standard, or in God's way. Disciple, am I being taught? This is the command I tell you to do. And then the whole world will know that God is with us, God is for us, God. Then the people will say, hey, let's go there. For those people know God. Amen? Uh, yeah. Those people know God. Let's learn God from them. Come with me to John 15 chapter. So we talk about this, we're going to talk about this. the practical aspects from the Bible, biblical perspective. The, the practical perspectives to emphasize God's zeal and strong passion for God's people to be divinely built up in his way, in his order, with his desire and wisdom. Then they can become a people. He truly can love, and they can truly love him with all their heart, all their soul, all their strength, and all their minds. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, turn with me to two scriptures we can talk about. There's a place in somewhere, there was a um, Pharisee, oh, not Sadducee, I don't know, a teacher of the law come to him and said, what you think the, 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 the law is about, right? So, 
Amen. Hallelujah. So, and she said, you know, the law is, there's two laws, you know, mean there are two laws. Love the Lord with your heart, the greatest commandment. Let's Matthew 22 now. Talking about the marriage and resurrection, after he explained that the coming kingdom or the spiritual kingdom operates contrary to the ways of man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is a living God, his people. Therefore, you need to read the scriptures or approach God's word with a spiritual perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in 22 chapter now, this was in the controversy time. He was a dialogue with the Pharisees. The Pharisees come to challenge him, and the others come to challenge him. The Pharisees said to him in schools, so the teachers come to challenge him. Try to try, he really he understand the scriptures or not. Understand the law or not. Understand God or not. And he put them, every one of them, into silence. Mm. So from here in 29, it started with Sadducee challenging him about afterlife. Sadducee don't believe there is angels, there is afterlife. So Jesus said, you are in error because you don't know what the symptom whether the diagnosis said it's very straightforward, but we're cutting him, right? Mm -hmm. We're cutting. Mm -hmm. Talk about teacher of the law, don't know the scriptures, that is uh, to just deny their profession, right? So, mm -hmm. so basically, you don't, you don't, you're not even worthy to talk to me. Mm -hmm. You're not qualified to talk to me. You are in error, what he said? Moses is not right, right? You are fundamentally wrong. Because the reason, give a reason, you don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Two things. First, you don't know the scriptures. <laughs> wow. Second, you don't know the power of God. Wow. They're dead. Spiritually, intellectually. Dead man. And talk about the resurrection. This is a shout out of a resurrection, am I right? So therefore they have no spiritual understanding mm -hmm. to enter the kingdom of God, eternal life, spiritual life. So hello. Is this the West? Yes. Hi guys. Hey brother, how are you doing? Had a good time? Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they they played for an hour with five minutes left. We were winning, and the other team begged for another inning, and we lost. Oh no! <laughs> crushing the feet. Okay. That's why we told you don't go, guys. Right? So get a beat up. So. <laughs> well, bless you, brother. We'll continue. We turn to Matthew twenty-two now. We tell the Pharisees come to Jesus talking about uh, the challenge of his understanding. Jesus refuted them by word sharp words. He said, You don't know the scriptures, Matthew 22 29. You don't know the scripture, nor the power of God. Mm. There you go. Goes on speaking 33 now. Said, I am the God, the Lord said, I am the God of Abraham. This is the word he spoke to Moses. So, I'm the God of Abraham, amen, hallelujah. That's what Moses was called, the burning bush. I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, he didn't reveal himself to anyone in return. Mm. And then he called Moses out of the 400 years. He said, Moses, let's continue. Mm. I want to be a living God to your people now. But you are the chosen vessel. In the God of Jacob. Now they have the tradition. They have their prophetic hope. They have their cry. But God said, No, I'm not moving to fulfill the things I have promised. Hmm. I'm not engaging with that reality. Do we understand? Why I'm saying this? What about today? Now in between time, people have angels. People have many other things going on. Amen? Hallelujah. 
after Abraham, they have David, and right, have Solomon. So, have a lot of other things going. I mean, sorry, uh, not Solomon, but in between time, in 400 years, you can think God is still intervened, did many other things. Hallelujah. But the priesthood, the covenant he had with Abraham is not more an inch. Mm. They lock into a, a stage, am I right? So God said, He is not the God of the dead, but the living. So, I had to understand, most of the lawgiver. So, this is the pointing to where Moses has received the commission. To the beginning of all things. To tell this Pharisee, the teacher of the law said, Do you know what's really going on? Why you take so much pride, so much confidence in as if you know the most. <coughs> you know the Sadducees do. Sadducees, I'm sorry, Sadducees. Sadducees only believe in the law of Moses. They don't even believe the prophets. Hmm. So they talk on the Moses. <laughs> you want to know Moses? There's an argument. You know, this is where cool. <coughs> people can argue with everybody. Only Moses' law can they hold on to. Only God gave Moses' law. Nobody else. No other book. Nothing. This is our law, Moses. And uh, Jesus said, You don't know Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you try to represent, try to teach about him. <coughs> and you take so much pride in him. As if you are the disciple, you are the inheritor of his, his ways. But you don't even know who he is. In God. You can think about this Sadducees, this is so shut down, right? Everything he tried to rise up a little bit, got just, Jesus is cut on his feet. You know, so. mm. He's a sharp. What if I tell you, Ben, you know nothing about God's family culture. You're going to get it super offended, right? I know, I know, I know. But that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He said to new demons, hey, you're not born again, you know, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can talk to you about this one from above. You're not born again. But we, we don't like this kind of thing. Yet, in order for us to attain onto such wisdom, to flow into such reality, we have to repent. We have to forego the old one skin. We have to say, I really don't know. I want to be told by God. Mm -hmm. That's nothing about the sh being shamed or being discredited. That's only because God is going to give you the real thing now. So, mm -hmm. what do you want? <laughs> what else is you want? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now go on. So, 34 said, Jesus has silenced the Sadducees. Then the Pharisees got together with one of them, a teacher of the law, or an expert in the law. What? An expert. Am right? He stand above others. Tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? They all know they are talking about Moses' law now. Am right? So, Mm. They're not so casual talk. They're talking about who knows the scriptures. Mm. That's the key. It is replying, Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest command. And the second, like this, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, amen, all the law, he said, and the prophets, the Pharisees don't believe the prophets, the Pharisees said, no, we believe the prophets, we believe in angels, the resurrection. So Jesus said, no matter, your little division, your rock argument, really not getting anywhere, either way. Your whole school <coughs> thoughts, your whole approach about the approach in the Word of God, is getting nowhere. Mm. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, often translated in our own context of scriptures, this is Jesus speaking. 
I'll just tell you, he was uh, contradicting the teacher's law. So they talk about the who Moses is, what the law of Moses is. But when God gives the law, and so soothes the leaders, the people, when talking about the law, they are more than talking about the law. They are talking about how God has set ways to govern his people. What a kind of society. What a kind of people God wants to have. What a guiding law, like a nation ours. What a kind of constitution we have here. Mm -hmm. Same judgment other fears are talking about is only uh, uh, outcome for those things. It's only the uh, expression of those things. But the governing way, the governing spirit, the governing heart, the governing principle, vision of the things. So the people said, we can study and know that by studying the prophets, studying Moses, studying the law, studying the prophets. Therefore, we have the knowledge of it. Therefore, we can tell people how to love their God, and so that God can love us and his people. God can give us a few and blessings. This is the contest. But let me ask the question now, very simple. Do we treat this understanding in such a contest to that in today's Christian teachings? Hmm. It's always a personal. It's always as if Elaine gonna do something unique, good evidence of badness. We will never think about it need the people to rise up. To embrace a law and the vision God has for his people. It's a community, it's a people. Amen? Hallelujah. So, my contention is if we understand things <coughs> in the light of a personal perspective, personal holiness, personal piousness, personal spirituality, we pretty much miss the whole thing God's grace intended for. His people in this time who will never get there mm. because that's not God's grace intended to fulfill. Unfortunately, that's most of the time we do. We try to evangelize people, we try to encourage others to serve the Lord without fully understand what the wisdom, what the vision God has for His people. But as you wonder this, another prophet, another teacher, another worshiper, who defines those things? How does it define? Who defines them? I see popular Christianity define everything. I don't see God define those things. Amen? Hallelujah, I'm making sense to you. So, what a pastor is. What it means a pastor? I see man define those things other than God. What a puzzle is. What a puzzle is. Hmm. Everything. So it matters. But eventually, to start talking about the spiritual services, spiritual offices, what about the father? What about the being wife? Being a son of God. Be being a son in the family. Being a daughter. Being a sister, being a brother. Have we examined those things? This question. <coughs> Have we examined in the light of God wants them to be examined? Mm. Always with the with an ongoing context mm. that it passed on from generation to generation. And we continue to use those in the condition who oh, allow others, who oh, others love me. Oh God love me, when I love God, when I serve God, or I serve my neighbor. Mm -hmm. So Jesus speaking here, love requires wisdom. While requires this education. Love requires this fundamental vision about what God's people need to be in the way God wants them to be, as a whole, as a whole. Now let's look at it. In this light, we can see 
So when this point, God elevated different persons through the generations, He set them aside, said, I want to do with humanity. The education, a revelation of me, impart my way to them in a very special fashion. One, Abraham called out all the peoples from his own homeland, his own family, am I, to become a new family in a strange land. Second, Moses was not in any way taught by the old tradition of the people. He had held this vision, this call, raised up in the wilderness by God. Had nothing to do with whatever. That was God's people that had. The old ones, in a sense. We see David. After everything falling apart, everything this doesn't work, Amen. Hallelujah. God raised up the shepherd boy again. He endowed him with such great adventures and glorious life, but he endowed him with such a wisdom, a heart after God's heart. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's you talking about the love of God. And that's a benefit of being chosen by God to be this kind of a recipient of heavenly wisdom. Amen. And to be builders, a servant of this kind of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So let's look at it again. He said, allowing the Lord your God, all the law on all this, all the prophets on all this, allow your Lord, your God with the what? All your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The three things, all your heart, your soul, and your mind. So, Evidently, this love has to be imparted in these three ways hmm. and required an uh, expression, am I right? Uh, acting upon that love, then practice that love in these three levels. Amen? Hallelujah. Unfortunately, mankind has often loved God with their mind, with the soul. A few knows how to love God. What? The first thing first, with the heart. With the heart. The second thing, the same thing if you love God as a, this person, living God, not dead God, not tradition, not teachings, a person, a living God, then you can then translate that love, that interaction, that culture, that reality, said, what well, God, is dealing me, loving me, interact with me in this way, I need to tell my wife about it. I need to tell my child about it. I need to tell my neighbor about it. I need to fellowship and build them up in this same wisdom, same understanding, same reality. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, love your neighbor, what? As yourself. The self is not selfish self. It's not unsanctified self. It's not a kernel self. It's a self that has been sanctified, been enlightened, and been trusted itself. That one has love God. That one is entrusted by the love of God, built up by the love of God, filled up the love of God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, all the law and the prophets hung on those things. Now, in old ancient times, there is not too much thing going on, so they need they don't have they don't have walls like we do. So they, don't, they only have a tent, temporal buildings, am right? Temporary. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they have things to be organized? I mean, it's everything on the floor. They don't have walls. They don't have a shelf. They don't have come. So what they do? They often have to do a peg, peg, am I right? Stick somewhere either so they're going to hang things on it. Like we do, you know, like Homer says. So they hung a lot of things on it. The major things are hung. The tent are hung. Hung on a pole. <laughs> you see my point? Everything is hung. So in order to build a structure, in order to have things organized, put in order, everything <coughs> needs to know how things are hung. How to hung it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not like 
today we have so like, hey, can you have a, a nail there in the Bible? Awesome. So they were careful with everything about that peg. Mm. Amen? Hallelujah. That's, that's the thing you do, you know? So then you don't just haul everything on it because it's so heavy or disorganized, then we're going to fall down. <laughs> or crushed. You know, those don't have iron, don't have things that maybe have a pot. You know? <laughs> so, so they were careful with this thing. Means we're careful about it. The word tactical about it. The word mindful of it. So in that way they have a, a reverence, or not a reverence, a word careful way to approach the thing, a soberness. The parents will tell child, this is how you hung the tent. Don't hold in this way. This is how you draw a peg. Don't dry shallow, don't dry in sand. Dry in the solid place. This is how you pitch the tent. Parents will tell, you know, whatever, you know. How oh, not to have a heavy pot there, you know? You're gonna fall down and the pot is gonna be broken. Don't hold the wine skin there. The wine gonna spill over if you fall down. So <laughs> you're gonna break. Amen, hallelujah. You know? They build up in little ways in everyday life from when they were young. This is a lifestyle. Now, how you love God in everyday life. That's everyday life. Which some of us has done tremendously. In this light I want to recommend Ben and Cheryl. Because they did not separate the love of God from practical ways of life. And God eagerly wants us, John, we have some struggle going on, right? So, we need to know your work life, your career life, your everyday life, everything you do. God first. And God in the front, God in the center, and God in the end. God on the left and on the right side. If you do that, not religiously, just literally he will do it with you. <laughs> literally that's how you want to walk with you. Amen, hallelujah, that's how you want to walk with you. And therefore you will naturally build up. Your children will feel free to worship God, talk about God, learn from God. They don't think, okay, I need a devotional time to do that. Mm. They were in the end of the game. Mama, I think God taught me this through this <laughs> game, even when I lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think? Mama, them, them child is Detroited. What do you think happening? Can we pray for? Mm -hmm. It will be natural, am I? So, there will be heart driven, amen, rather than mind guided. Hello, brother, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, he goes on. Then he said, so this is talking about the family culture, right? A people as a family. People as a people. Let's continue the conversation. This is the word tactical. Mm -hmm. So we're just talking about the family culture of God, right? Mm -hmm. To be God's people. Ah. Uh, what you do is people don't love God. Mm. Let's go on. Jesus gives a full answer, but nobody believes it. They're so stuck in their message, in their own contest. Go on. 41. Now he, everybody is quiet and says, that's a good answer, man. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily understand the true application of it. What the end result? Let's go on. While the Pharisees would get together, they just ask them, you know the, 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 the story other reports, you know, other guys will say, that's wonderful, that's a great answer, am I right? So mm -hmm. then they walk away, they say. Or they didn't walk away, they said, okay, we don't want to challenge you, but you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But Jesus didn't stop there, he began to challenge them. Not for the sake to make them shame, shamed or <laughs> 
downfall needed, for the sake to enlighten them. That our Lord who always wants to challenge others in order for them to be enlightened. Mm. But we'll miss the point, am I? We just think he tried to be right, to be smart, to be inside for things. No, he'll try to teach. He always wants to teach people. Mm. Now, if you learn the Lord, every conversation you carry will have a quote-unquote ultra purposes. <laughs> Not really, if you know me. I don't think that's strange. It's not a wise teacher going to teach students in such a way. <laughs> a wise father going to enjoy with little baby, little children, you know, young ones in this way. And then a coach going to involve with the one he coaching in this way. Mm -hmm. He always have ultra motives for their benefit, not undermine them, or not oversmart them. It's know what they need to grow into, mm -hmm. what need to be enlightened of. And he's the enlightener. He's a light. He's a teacher. He's a guide of the way. He's a counselor. He wants to build and flow and contents continuously as a relationship, as a normal for life. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's what it means to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be a good coach. That's what it means to be a good father. Amen. God on the front, in the center, behind, before, above, and below. If you know God, everything you do is God. Not just to think. Everything you do is God. And you mess it up, God is still going to be with you to teach you, to mend you up, to mold you, to improve you, to build you up. Hmm. And the people around you were said, Oh, David sinned miserably, but he's still the king. He's loved by God. Because why? Because when he sinned, he ran back to God. And God loves him. And God speaks to him. Look, Nathan just walked into David. Well, let's see what Nathan told him. Jesus said, God just spoke to me about David last night. <laughs> Tell me to come from this thing. But also, after the same deal was, oh, God just speaks some mighty things for us. Through him. Let's hang around. Let's support him. Let's, let's, let's make it up, you know, his sin and move on with him as a people of God. We're not just falling apart. We're not getting anywhere. Hey, you know what? God set this up for us so that we can move on to the next thing. <coughs> How beautiful that can be. Now you stand up, bro. Bless you. This is God. This is how God wants to deal with our sins, our failures. Amen. He doesn't want to bury remorse. He doesn't want to condemn us. But He do want us to improve ourselves. To want to advance ourselves as people, with people. To carry on in Him. Go ahead. Lord, we praise You and we, we thank You that You see our hearts. You see and You know each one. Lord, we thank You that Your hand of discipline, Lord, Your teaching is perfect. Lord, Lord, You desire Your people to grow and to learn. Lord, to move forward and Lord, be successful in your kingdom, in your life. Thank you, Jesus, that you made the way. Lord, that you guide our steps, that you provided a path. Thank you, Jesus, for your plain talk and your, your wisdom. Lord, to the people of your day, to people of our day, Lord, for all time, Lord, these truths remain the same. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we know these everlasting truths. Mm. May we know this eternal way. The kingdom culture, the family culture of your kingdom. Mm. Lord, that you have desired from the very beginning. Mm. Lord, we want it in our lives. Yes, Father. Lord, we want to walk it out. Son of God. We cannot do it on our own, Lord. Yes, Father. We confess that 
our own efforts are, are fruitless. They are a failure, Lord. But if we would walk with you, if we would listen to your, your guidance and your ways, that you would fruit up such beautiful things, Lord, that would benefit not only our, us, Lord, our own families, but many more, mm. many generations to come, Lord. Mm. So, Lord, we pray to this end, Lord, that, that you would teach us, mm. Lord, and that you would bless us. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Now, to sum up this God, God's love for his people as a whole, we literally have a very practical decision to make in our personal walk. Mm. Never treat God's love as if merely about affection or emotion. <coughs> it's a far beyond that. It's a way. It's His faithfulness in His righteousness, in His we, in His wisdom. He's, he has no shadow in His way. And therefore, you treat His way as that, as a permanent light, am I? Shining mm -hmm. light. Then you don't drift. You know, today I feel allowed. Today I feel allowed. Tomorrow I don't feel allowed. Today I feel this guy loves me. Tomorrow I don't feel he loves me anymore. Mm. You can't do that with your child. Your child is going to be a wreck emotionally. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. You can't do that with your parents. Your parents are going to be upset with you. You can't do that with your workers. Your worker will say, I don't know how to work with that guy. You can't do that with your leaders. Leader said, I don't know, that guy, he's, he's just always shifting shadows. <laughs> he's a bipolar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Up and down all the time. He's, I can't do that with anybody. Mm -hmm. You can't even true child play a little game. You can't play a simple card game. You have enjoyed nothing. But if you learn the fundamentals, I'm not going to be emotional driven. I'm not going to be feeling sensitive driven. I'm going to be righteous driven. I'm going to be wisdom driven. I'm going to, to, to do the right thing. To seek the reason why things need to be right. I'm going to group with people, fellowship with people, learn from people who know what is right. I'm going to fellowship and practice and teach others about these things. You're always going to lead. Or others are going to lead with you. <coughs> or work with you. You lead one another. You, you right hand, left hand. God's mind. Let's do the same together. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, you not strife. You rest. You rest from your own labors. Because this we always overcome. This love always overcome, always endure. Mm -hmm. Love never fails. What love? Affectionate love? Mm -hmm. I mean, Peter feels Jesus, am I right? Mary feels his song, her song, am I right? <coughs> James is right, and I feel the Lord, am I right? Mm -hmm. Teach that we know better. How Peter and John can work together, they, they continue, you know, sounder, sounder, the other was pretty hard-headed, well, you know, who can see the right hand? Peter heard about it, no way, you just ask the Lord about that, you know, <laughs> you think you are? <laughs> can you love one another? You can never love one another in that way, but a few months later, what they do, they will die for them. But something fundamentally changing them. Something fundamentally changing them. Let me repeat. Something fundamentally changing them. Mm -hmm. It's not merely a hope anymore. The Lord is here. Angel living him up. Whatever he shares with us. It's not a fast. It's a man. Is it here? It's mm -hmm. not. Whatever he entrusted us is real. Amen. It's what God wants us to be able to do. Ah, uh, don't tell me I know I'm not gonna be a godly father. 
Ah, don't tell me I'm not going to be a teacher of word God. <laughs> don't tell me I cannot disciple others. <laughs> That's what we do. Mm. Nobody has stop us, Peter said. <laughs> hey, you can talk whatever you want. You can do whatever you like to do to us. But nobody can stop us. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> we are more than committed. <laughs> we are it. <laughs> mm. We only commit to something if we are it. Amen. We are it. Songs of God, serve the Lord. That's not don't require the struggle. You are it. So now when Jesus speaking in the family culture of God, and people silence. They said, "Okay, you know, if the Lord of Moses is truly fulfilled in you as a holy people, now what's more to come? What else going to come? Ah, his kingdom will rule. His kingdom will reign. Do you want to be taught like that? You only learned the good with Moses, but what about David? What about the you become a kingdom?" Then Moses is about people, am I right? So, mm. our God and love the neighbor. And then God said, if you do this, Jesus said, if you do this, you subdue everything. You will teach everybody. Let's go on. While the Pharisees get together, Jesus asked them, what do you think of the Christ? <laughs> what do you think of the anointed one? Whose son is he? <laughs> What wisdom he has. What his mind is about. <coughs> what his heart is about. What his ways. But they ask a future shining person, a beautiful prophet, right? a great teacher, right? a great king to come. But he said, what way he has. What kind of word he is. <laughs> teacher of the word, God. The son of Devi, they replied, it's like natural for them. You know, you shoot a calculator, you roll the program, what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the program always produces the same result. <laughs> Automatically. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what program is for. Mm -hmm. The son of Devi, it sounds like everything's right. Now, let me ask you, how many people today, when talk about things, they are so programmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can literally know why they say what they say. Mm -hmm. But they never rewrite the program. They didn't even write the program. Mm. Sorry, I'm programmer now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I understand. They like never think. They never think why it happened. Mm -hmm. He said to them, How is it then? He began to program them. How is it that David, speaking that by the pro of the Spirit, call him Lord. Ah, good question. Honor. How in the world David would call him Lord? Honor, right? Lord is more honorable than you. You are subject. You call somebody Lord. Unless you are a subject. <laughs> For he says. The Lord said to my Lord, He says, Sit on my right hand, and you are putting your hand on your feet. Now, let's say, Jesus didn't give them a let. I just be continue <coughs> praised by our Lord, am right? He didn't give them, Oh, you agree with me? That's good. Let's, let's move on. Jesus is just torn everything apart, He pulls everything. He said, okay, now you're quiet. Let me tell you the problem you have. You don't know the scripture of the park. He didn't leave them alone. Mm -hmm. He says, that's where you are. You are in total darkness and death and misery and pride and arrogance and foolishness. That's what he said. That's literally what he said. You really hear the hear voice. 
That's what he said. Mm -hmm. You know nothing. Mm -hmm. You talk nonsense. You represent God's wrongly. You deserve no honor in God, nor from his people. Not only for me. That's what he said. Then right, John, right, then trust me. As they are dressed in high robes, you know, come up, try to challenge Jesus. You don't have the right to teach the people. Jesus is stripping them down. I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm talking about the boss. Truth is sake, for love's sake, for God's sake, let mm -hmm. leave human hypocrisy and contempt in peace. Mm. Stir the nest. Cut off the serpent's head. Expose the devil's horns, you know, the whatever, the liar. You know. Stir it up. Burn it off. That's what you do. That's the fire do. That's a that's light do. No one if they will call him Lord, how can he be his son? I no one dare to say a word reply. Why they don't want to ask? This is the most important question. <laughs> I gained some insight from the real teacher. Why? Question. Is that Lord really wants us to be quiet? Or be exposed? Or he wants to teach them? Mm. Now, then what the Lord intended really want to teach them? The kingdom culture. Mm. The kingdom culture. So we see the two, am I right? We see spiritual lives about human beings are not just merely angels. Resurrection life is more than just knowing something. You have to have the living God in your life to be taught by Him. And when you're taught by Him, you will know how to be God's people now. Not only for yourself, but as a people of God, how to love one another in his love, with his way. Then what next? With his love, everybody can learn from God, everybody being subdued by God's love, by God's righteous and grace. Amen. Hallelujah. And the teacher of the law, teacher of the wisdom of God, going to be the ruling order of the day. Am I right? This priesthood, the kingship, will put into right for honor, right of function. Righteous and truth will reign. Amen. Love and wisdom will spring up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is the entrustment of discipleship. Let's see. He can't teach the Pharisees. He can't teach the Pharisees, Sadducees. Who he taught? He taught his disciples. Let's turn to 15 chapter John. I'm going to finish this up then. So, so we we'll see again. So, what Jesus really cares about. When you talk about discipleship, abiding him doing them. When you talk about love, when you talk about teaching the word, mm. when you talk about serving God, what it really is about. We often said, well yeah, those things we want to do. But what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? The Lord were clear. He never, he never you know, blurry or, 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 or confused, you know. Mm -hmm. He's always straight ahead, straight sharp. Amen. On target. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's come back to this. In the beginning, I want uh, Ben to read for, for us. Mm -hmm. Then we finish uh, today's session. Mm -hmm. 15 1? Yeah, the whole chapter. <clears throat> I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it may be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Abide in me, that means. Okay, go ahead. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If by remaining in me, he said, remain my love. And by remaining in love, he said, remain my teachings. Mm. So there's three things. Go ahead. You can expound on it. Go ahead. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. 
Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit. Condition of granting the wishes is you are you in him, his word remains in you. Mm. Without that, there's no faith to talk about. The devil will feed you your words, but mm. that's not true. Mm. So the things that he rem you remain in him is you have faith in him. His word remains in you is he truth to teach you, to abide in you. Therefore, you have this oneness with him. Mm. You ask anything, he will give to you. By the way, what you ask is what you need in him. Amen? It's, it's a good pleasure to give to you. Go ahead. Mm. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So you're talking about love now. Mm. So now remain in my love. So, discipleship is to teach the people of God for the love. Mm -hmm. Not, we know all the love. Let's do discipleship. Mm -hmm. Opposite. Yes. That's just ridiculous. But that's most of the convention. Mm. We love one another, we're so good at others, so let's, let's just get together and learn God. Mm. Well, the condition should be, you don't know how to love God's people, you don't know how to love God, let us teach you about that. So come with the spirit of poverty. Mm. Then you can be taught. If you say you already know, you have it, you are able to do it. Well, don't ever disciple such a man. He's unteachable. He's a foolish. Mm. He's out the branch. He will never learn God. Therefore, walk away from such people. Amen? Hallelujah. And that is the instruction. That is a command. You have to walk away. Mm. Not really me. You, it's your job to cut off the wrong branches. It's your job to, sh to shift the, 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 the... You understand my point? You know? We don't try to harm people. It's talking about you don't want to labor in places where stolen bushes are <coughs> growing. Mm -hmm. You want to labor in the good field to build the right house for the Lord. Labor in where it bears fruits. On wise. Many ah, labor in things never meant to grow. Even if it grows, it's the wrong fruits. Mm. Not, not harsh, this is a simple truth. Why does the truth become a challenge to us? Simple terms, like one plus one equals two, right? So it's not that hard to understand. Why? Because we don't know how to love God. Ah, we love ourselves, love man. More than God. We have idolized something else outside God's way. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds challenging, but that's good. Know that, then turn back to worship the true God and follow His true ways. Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> if you obey my commands, and you will remain in my love, just as I have a Obeyed my if, father's commands. If you obey my words, that's what he means. Okay, my mm. teachings, commands. It's so as if he tell you A, B, C, a working list. But here is talking about the teaching, teaching, a way, a way, mm -hmm. a lifestyle. Go ahead. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love, I have told you this so that my joy may be may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Let's look at this. So if Jesus didn't follow the word of God, the will of God, mm -hmm. can he remain our Father's love? He's a said. I'm excluded. I am loved by the Father. It's because I obeyed his commands, I obeyed his teachings, I obeyed his words. You do the same. Show that you love me. And when you love me, well, the Father is going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the way we love. This is the way of the love. So wisdom the love can never be separated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Go ahead. 
And let's replace God's love with something else. Hmm. Go ahead. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. Now, the lay down his life for his friends is not just die on the cross. That's not what it's with translate. Mm -hmm. He died, he sang, he died for sins, therefore we redeemed. So lay down life here is a very, very particular contest. Means I'm going to have your best interest in my mind. I can do everything I care for you to be established in that thing. Mm. I will serve you to the uttermost that I can. So that you can succeed in the thing you need to succeed in. Has not to do with this religious connotation. Christ died on the cross, therefore he loved us so much, he redeemed us, we are sinners saved by grace. All those, Jesus is speaking real practical relationships. He said, when I'm with you, I have God's Father interest in you. I see it, and I learn from Him. I'm going to help you every way I can, so that you know the love of the Father as I do. Mm -hmm. That's what He said. Mm -hmm. He said, I will do the best so that you be stopped <laughs> the same thing, therefore you can be my friend. <laughs> so we can love one another, mm. or else we cannot love one another. We have different love. We are walking different world. Well, don't tell the Pharisees don't love God. They're going to be super upset with you. Don't tell Peter they don't love God. <laughs> Don't tell Mary, the mother said you don't love God. At the end of the day, they have to say, no, I don't, because I don't know his son. Mm. I was missing it. Mm. He tried all the time to tell me to learn his love. I don't know. I was missing it. Mm. That's a basic of humility. I don't know what's wrong with our as creatures. Hard for us to say, I don't know much about God's love. I don't know how to love one another. Now, if you put this in mind, your children is the most blessed children because it's always going to grow in love. They never said, I know the love, therefore I mm. addicted to everybody what it should be like. Amen, hallelujah. Talk about the controlling spirit. That's a real controlling spirit there. Mm. Tell people what they do without the living God. Without humbly said, I want to love God. Let us have learned how to love God. Driven by emotion, driven by senses, driven by idolized way of man. In an expensive living God, living wisdom of God. And that is a sin for God's people. With that sin, you can never serve God. You can never list, uh, list, list God's people. And I said to these teachers of the day, most of us as leadership, we need to repent according to the standard. I will be very cautious to somebody who said, we need to love one another. Let me look at it. Where are you speaking? Why are you speaking it? What do you intend to produce with that statement? You can't even fellowship with me on these things. Don't ever talk to me about God's love. You don't know anything about it. You're struggling. You are, are still need to cross a far distant land to get there. You have no grace for me. You have no wisdom for me. It's a distraction for me. You didn't stay up and pray for me. It will for us, yes. Yes, Lord, we thank you for, for this truth, Father, for um, this wisdom, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come and, and receive of it, Lord. Father, we pray that we would truly understand, Father, your, your ways, Lord, and your, your fundamental order, Father, your wisdom and your love, Lord, and what it truly means and how it is to, 
and to operate amongst us, Lord. Just ask, Father, that we would be um, just humble and, and, and willing sons, Father, to, to learn of this way and to, to practice it and, and obey it, Lord. We, we have the grace to do that, Father. Mm. It is our true desire, Lord. To Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To live and to honor you, Father, in your ways. Mm. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless you, Lord. In mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm blessed, blessed by each one of you. That's why God wanted us to move into the real deal. You know, we're speaking strong terms, these things, because we need to know what our one skin is about. <laughs> we need to know what the river needs to cross. We need to know the vision, the pattern God. Then we can say, let's learn of it. Let's start in you. Let God have us a willing one. We're not content, we're not circling the same mountain. You know, I love John Stephen said, it's insanity <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to continue to do the same thing, expect a different result. Let's finish this. Go ahead. You, you, you. I'm not going to stop you anymore. So, but you see, <coughs> you see it. Then you know why Jesus is talking this way. Go ahead. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, call, I have made known to call you. Call laborers, call workers, mm. one who shares the same counsel, same vision, same responsibility. Amen. Hallelujah. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, mm. fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to this world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. The one translation again is misconstruing. Hmm. No servant deserves more honor than his teacher. They don't respect honor the teacher, they will disrespect you, you know, yeah. as a consequence. Hmm. You know, um, if the kingdom, the king is despised or hated by another nation, his ambassador will be hmm. Hmm. killed, you know, whatever, you know, they will do everything. To dishonor, eh? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. But we translate it wrong. Why? Because religion, you see that? Mm -hmm. Everything is about religion. Everything is about competition. Everything is about uh, ranking, position. Doing religion. Eventually doing religion. Tell people what to do. We, without the reality, without the true mission, the true purpose, without love. If somebody is thinking of those terms, do he really love? Mm. It's missed the whole deal. And in the center of a teaching about the love of one another. If we don't get this alarm built up about how much religion has corrupted the minds of man and the ways of God represented, we really need a wake up call. Go ahead. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. You see? Honor my teaching. You honor something that you obey. Right? Mm. Go ahead. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. Mm. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Mm. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. Mm. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had did something, right? Mm. And saw it. They have no excuse. That's a lot of miracles, a lot of teaching. <laughs> wow. If only the Lord do a miracle, if only the Lord teach me something. 
It raises the standard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what's really going on. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, are you sure? <laughs> So, so we don't get frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not our job. <laughs> mm. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. Oh, wait, the uh, But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in the law. They hated me without reason. Mm. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Testify. What do you mean testify? Oh, I'm in the testimony. Some God did a miracle, God did this, God revealed something to me. Mm. Testify through the life change. Mm. A fundamental transform life, a fundamental transform of wisdom. A, a different heart to carry yourself, to allow God, allow God's people. Mm. And this is the way how we love another. This is the way how we learn to love another as in disciples. Then rise. Mm -hmm. This is how God can restore us. Yet he implied here today the teaching I said that there is a family culture <laughs> about love, and there is a kingdom culture about subduing with this love. When you do it, the teaching of the Word of God, the real Word of God, with the living God, with the Holy Spirit, is the way. True discipleship is the ruling order, and the arm and the way of God want Him to be served. Amen. In this slide, we want to bless our greater audience of future generations, if God willing, this recording will not only benefit ourselves, <coughs> Amen, it's going to benefit many, I believe. So. Mm. Have that confidence. Amen. God, people will change. Their mind will be changed. Sonship, glory God, the wisdom God, the love God, is the ancient ways can be restored in the midst of the people. And we are the forefathers of things. So, bless the Lord. We're not to puff ourselves up. We want the truth. We want God's grace. Greater pure, mightier, for the benefit of his people, for the fulfillment of his desire and his ways towards us. In this we bless, 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 bless you, Lord Jesus, that I thank you for the heart of each one of you here, Lord, a pure, loving, faithful heart, a dedicated heart, Lord. I know we have, all have a shortcoming, have struggles, our Lord, this is our ask you supernaturally every other vision to such a place that we see you who you are, Lord. We see your ways towards us. We see your intent towards us. We see your goodness towards us. In this we say, indeed, your loving kindness endure forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pray for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we praise you, Lord, Jesus. Lord, for you are the King, you are the, the Messiah, the Anointed One, Lord. You are the one and only begotten Son of the Father, one who was with him in the beginning, who was prophesied from the beginning that you would come. Indeed, you are the first and you're the last. Mm -hmm. You will come again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, Lord, we ask that we do walk in obedience unto your commands and to be alert, Lord, doing what you commanded us to do, Lord, when you return, to be a good and faithful servant to the end, Lord. So, Lord, I, I thank you for the words that were spoken today, Lord, from soon, Lord, and from your scriptures, Lord, that indeed 
Lord, that the foundation of your heart and who you are is love. And that you said the good trees will bear good fruit. Hallelujah. And that the evidence of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Mm. And Lord, so we ask for that to grow within us, Lord. Lord, we ask that as you continue to establish your ways and your heart and your culture, Lord, among us, Lord, that it would indeed, this love would grow, Lord. <clears throat> so, Lord, we praise you. We bless you, Father. We bless you for your good. Mm. You're always good. Mm. And we, Lord, we await joyfully, Lord, to be with you. So to you be all glory and honor and praise, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, Wes, can you pray for us as well? I'm going to say all the names for us to pray. In Jesus' name, yes. Father, we thank you for your love. Jesus, we thank you for showing us the way, for showing us the life of the Father's love and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Lord, we beseech you to <coughs> help us to break through, break through the, the mold that would continually surround us of religion, of worldly ways of life that falls far short of the glory of God. Or that we can strike forth as you have in our doing amongst us, in living the pure kingdom life of love and wisdom, of sharing the glory of God with all we encounter. That your kingdom has come that your life is here and that we live for nothing else. Lord, help us to not be distracted. Help us to be focused on you, your beauty and grace and all that is mighty and holy in this time. We are yours, Lord. And thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Vane, brother, thank you for being with us. We really appreciate you being with us. We're encouraged by you. Uh, Cheryl, thank you for being with us as well. We're going to wrap it up. You know, so until next time. Have a great two weeks, not just one week. <laughs> <laughs>